Hey everyone, it's Kong again with another episode of Should You Summon? As always, I'm not going to be presenting builds or guides for these characters, but high-level overviews using these four criteria to help you decide whether it's worth spending your hard-earned vouchers and crystals on these characters. How they fit into your team, whether they unlock any bonds, what kind of content they get used for, and their future availability. So, let's cut to the chase and take a look at this Destiny banner featuring Lana, Rachel, and Tiaris. Since this is a Destiny banner, your first SSR character is guaranteed to be one of these three that you don't already have. After your first SSR pull, then this reverts back to a normal Raid Up banner and you can start pulling off-banner characters. So first, let's take a look at Lana. She's a powerful magic DPS hero who's currently also featured on one of the newbie-friendly beginner banners if you've just started an account. Her talent gives her one extra range on her skills, so her niche is being able to avoid counterattacks even from ranged units by outranging them. She has access to powerful single target and area of effect spells and excellent soldiers in sorceresses. She's a member of Dark Reincarnation buffed by Bozel, and Princess Alliance, buffed by Shelfaniel and Luna. For bonds, she unlocks the attack bond for Sonya. So no SSRs are blocked out by Lana, but it is important to note that Sonya did recently get her powerful new 3-cost skill, which makes her more viable in PvP. Sonya can be a big DPS unit, so she's definitely going to want her attack bond unlocked. For Lana's own bonds, she needs Leon for her defensive bond, and Elwyn for her attack bond. For content, Lana is an excellent overall PvE character. She's one of the important puzzle pieces for defeating the Ice Dragon and Leviar in the Eternal Temple. She's also useful against Fenrir and Needhog in Ancient Beckoning. In PvP, she has some mean skills and equipment synergies that make her a solid pick for Apex Arena, although she has fallen out of favor this season, largely because she doesn't bring anything extra to the table. In terms of availability, she's not showing up on any banners in the near future, as of the time of this recording, that goes up to late September, so she may start showing up after that. Next up, we have Rachel. Remember what I said about Lana not bringing anything extra to the table? Well, Rachel is the queen of extra. Her talent allows her to remove debuffs and heal surrounding allies after doing damage, and this includes doing AoE damage. She has a nice variety of single target and AoE spells, and a 3-cost skill that's already available on global servers. She's a member of Protagonists, buffed by Matthew, and Yales Legends, buffed by Landius and Sigma. For Bonds, she unlocks the Defensive Bond for Lambda, and the All-Important Attack Bond for Landius. For her own Bonds, she needs Angelina for her Defensive Bond, and Landius for her own Attack Bond. So both of her Bonds are locked behind other SSR characters. For Content, in PvE she's on faction against Phoenix in the Eternal Temple, She's also great against the Ice Dragon for obvious magical reasons. In Ancient Beckoning, she's on faction for Hugin and Munin, but she's particularly useful in the fight against Needhog. In PvP, she's quite a common threat in meta Apex Arena boxes, both for her magical power and versatility, and because she has access to Gospel. Now this is an important point. Gospel allows her to protect against some mean strategies, but also provides a pseudo-buff to characters in case you have to deploy someone without access to their fusion power. This gives you a lot of freedom and flexibility in your ban pick phase. This is actually the kind of flexibility that Lana is missing right now. For availability, Rachel does appear on a Destiny banner in early July alongside Leden and Ultimuller. If you get her here, then you increase your chances of getting those guys then. Finally, we have Tiaris, who's hands down one of the most useful characters in the game. She's also on a newbie-friendly beginner banner alongside Leden, so if you've freshly created your account, then you have access, early access to her. She's a mobile healer with great support skills in Attack Blessing and Miracle, as well as a talent that gives surrounding heroes ongoing passive healing. Tiaris, paired with a strong tank, forms the core of many successful teams. She's a member of Protagonists, buffed by Matthew, Origins of Light, buffed by Dehart, Jugler, and Freya, and Princess Alliance, buffed by Shelfaniel and Luna. For Bonds, she unlocks the Defensive Bond for Gerald and Layla, and Gerald and Layla unlock her Defensive Bond. Similarly, she unlocks the Attack Bond for Dehart, and Dehart unlocks her Attack Bond. Now, as far as content, in PvE she's useful for pretty much everything. I'm talking story, time rifts, event challenges, secret realm stuff, 
joint battles. This includes ancient beckoning battles against Hugin and Munin, Jormagander, and Needhog. She's also a solid meta pick in PvP. Every box needs a handful of healers, and she's one of the best. For availability, similar to Lana, Tiras doesn't show up on any other banners in the near future, at least up until mid to late September. The scheduled predictions haven't really reached beyond that point yet, because that is the present in China right now. So just to wrap up, we have Lana, who's a powerful magic damage dealer with great range, and she unlocks the attack bond for Sonya. We have Rachel, who's a versatile single target and AoE magical threat. She unlocks bonds for Lambda and Landius, and she's popular in Apex Arena, partly thanks to Gospel. And finally we have Tiaris, who's one of the top three healers and one of the best characters in the game. She unlocks bonds for Gerald and Layla and Dehart. Overall, I highly recommend to summon on this banner unless you already have all three characters. Even if you don't have any of them and you're just pulling for the first random SSR that comes up, one of them is going to be useful to your teams. Just a final reminder about upcoming banners. Zilong Games did kind of pull the rug under us with this banner. This was originally scheduled in the Chinese servers to be coming up next week after the Leonhardt and Ren rerun. So right now, kind of assuming that next week's banner will be the Leonhardt and Ren rerun after the fireworks festival gets all squared away and taken care of. When this banner goes away, it should be replaced with the new characters Ashram and Deedlet. Deedlet is one of the most hyped new units we're getting in a long time, and has skyrocketed to the top of the Chinese PvP meta. It seems like everyone's hoarding vouchers for this banner, so you might want to hop on the hype train. Of course, it's also possible that they might not want to have two crossover collaboration banners right after one another, so they may not want to have Leonhardt and Ren immediately followed by Deedlet and Ashram. We basically have to wait and see what they do at this point. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments who you're hoping to summon and who you ended up getting. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next Should You Summon.